A few days ago, YouTube took down four videos from Alex Jones's YouTube channel and issued a guideline strike. This means they won't be able to do a live stream for about 30 days. Now we're hearing that Facebook has suspended Alex Jones's personal profile for 30 days. And that means he won't be able to post, but other editors on the Infowar page will be able to. This is part of an ongoing discussion about fake news. And a lot of people in the mainstream news are saying that YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, they need to do more to combat fake news from websites like Infowars. But Jordan Peterson says you should get your house in order before trying to change the world. Now, I'm not going to try to equate CNN to Infowars, but CNN certainly has had their list of very huge gaffes. And if you're going to argue that a few videos by Infowars, or maybe many of them, are somehow fake news or getting close to implying fringy ideas, then we can do the same to your news organization. It's important that we allow people to express themselves because we never know what might be crazy and what might sound crazy but turn out to be real. So just what happened to Infowars? Is CNN really at fault for this? And what mistakes has CNN made in the past that would put them on the chopping block next? But before we get started, please head over to patreon.com forward slash TimCast to become a patron and help support my work. This is what I do for a living. I make videos like this, I travel, I go on the ground, I interview, do field reports. If you wanna see more of that, please consider becoming a patron at whatever level you feel comfortable today. A few days ago, we saw this story from The Verge. YouTube issues a new strike against Alec Jones's channel over hate speech and child endangerment. They say that conspiracy theorist Alec Jones's YouTube channel received a strike on Tuesday for violating the site's community guidelines, The Verge has learned. YouTube removed four videos from Jones's channel, which has 2.4 million subscribers. That contained instances of hate speech and child endangerment, sources familiar with the matter said. YouTube channels are deleted if they get three strikes in a three-month period. Two videos contained hate speech against Muslims, and a third contained hate speech against transgender people, sources said. A fourth showed a child who was pushed to the ground by an adult man under the headline, How to Prevent Liberalism. All four of the videos are currently posted on Infowars. And yesterday we saw this story from the BBC. Facebook stops Infowars host posting for 30 days. Facebook has imposed a 30-day suspension on Alex Jones, founder of the Infowars conspiracy theory site. Mr. Jones is banned from using his account for 30 days for posting videos that Facebook said broke its community standards. The hiatus applies only to Mr. Jones, meaning the channel bearing his name on Facebook will still be active. Oliver Darcy is the senior media reporter for CNN, and he has repeatedly tweeted about Infowars on social media. In one tweet a few days ago, he said, parents of Sandy Hook victim write open letter to Mark Zuckerberg after our son's death. Online abuse claiming the attack was a hoax drove us into hiding, yet Facebook refuses to take meaningful action. He added, worth noting that Facebook has chosen to leave up Infowars videos that strongly suggest Parkland survivors were acting or that the shooting was a false flag. In response to this, CNN published a statement from Facebook where they said, we reviewed the posts you shared with us and no survivors were alleged to be lying, acting, or pretending to be a victim of the tragic event, nor were they accused of being paid to mislead people about their role in the tragedy. The video is still up on Facebook and it has the headline, are child actors being used to push gun control in Florida shooting? After watching the video, it would seem like what they're implying is that those who want gun control are using the most charismatic young people from the Parkland event to push the gun control narrative. Not that they're crisis actors, simply that they're charismatic drama students and things like that, and they're good on camera, so they're being propped up. Oliver Darcy tweeted a few days ago, Facebook has repeatedly declined to say specifically how many times Infowars would need to violate its standards to warrant a ban. And just yesterday, Darcy posted, Alex Jones has sent a bonkers cease and desist statement to CNN in which he accuses us of outrageously un-American conduct among a number of things. And he posted this image. Asked for comment, Jones responded in a statement sent through a representative after this article was initially published. In the statement, Jones accused CNN of publicly calling for the banning of his free speech and of being on a campaign against competing news organizations and the First Amendment, which he called outrageously anti-American. He demanded that CNN cease and desist. CNN has not called for anyone to ban Jones or Infowars from speaking but has been reporting on social platform stance towards Infowars, especially as those platforms claim to be combating misinformation. Oliver Darcy's reporting is heavily focused on what Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and other websites will allow, and they often talk about what Infowars is doing in a rather critical light. Like the tweet where he says, Infowars was strongly implying that Parkland survivors were acting or the shooting was a false flag. And yes, he highlights this video from Infowars where it says, probability Florida attack was a false flag for civil war, 90%. 
I don't think that's strongly implying, I think it's flat out saying it is extremely likely. And I think Oliver Darcy and CNN do raise an important point about fake news and what is or isn't allowed. Too many people are getting fake news from many different publications. It's not just Infowars. There are high profile news organizations that are well funded that put out total BS. For instance, Glenn Greenwald tweeted this just the other day. The very viral article from The Root claiming evidence that Russians changed actual votes and referring to them several times as Soviets has been taken down pending review. The Root issued a statement on the story. The story was an opinion piece asserting there was evidence that hackers changed votes in the 2016 election. However, a number of statements in the piece are disputed by experts. As a result, we have pulled it down for editorial review and will update it once that review is complete. The Root is part of the Fusion Media Group, and full disclosure, I used to work for Fusion. I left a few years ago. The Root is not a simple blog. It is owned by essentially Univision, so theoretically it is well-funded. They put out a story where they claimed that Soviet actors, not Russian, Soviet. The Soviet Union hasn't existed for a long time, but yes, they said Soviet over and over again. They had to edit the article and remove references to the word Soviet, ultimately taking the article down for making false claims. Now, this is really important when you realize other news outlets have cited this story as fact. This is the original story. Now we can see the editor's note talking about how the article was taken down but that just isn't enough. Because now Alternet has run this story. This reporter thinks Russian hackers changed votes for Trump and his explanation doesn't sound crazy. He believed that's the most likely scenario based on the available evidence. The article from Alternet actually quotes the now taken down article from The Root. So yes, fake news exists, it is well-funded, and it is pervasive. And it's not just The Root, it's not just Alternet, there are many, many more news organizations that do this, and if you follow my channel, you know I talk about this all the time. But now, let's look at those who live in glass houses and throw stones, CNN. Because here is a video from Don Lemon of CNN asking whether or not a black hole could have swallowed the missing Malaysian airplane. What if it was hijacking or terrorism or mechanical failure or pilot error, but what if it was something Fully that we don't really understand. A lot of people have been asking about that, about black holes and on and on and on and all of these conspiracy theories. Let's look at this. Uh, Noah says, what else can you think about? Black hole, Bermuda Triangle. And then Deji says, huh, just like the movie Lost. And of course, it's also, they're also referencing the Twilight Zone, which has a very similar plot. That's what people are saying. I know it's preposterous, but it, is it preposterous, you think, Mary? Well, it is a black hole, about, you know, a small black hole would suck in our entire universe, so we know it's not that. Bermuda Triangle is often weather, and uh, Lost is a TV show. So right. I think I always like things for which there's data, history, crunch the numbers. So for me, those aren't there, but I think it's wonderful that the whole world is trying to help with their theories, and I absolutely love the theories. First of all, a small black hole would not swallow the entire universe. There's most likely a supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy. And the universe is ridiculously massive and loaded with very large black holes. Don Lemon asked an absolutely insane question, and he had a host then give a particularly insane response. Are we to assume that what CNN is doing here is better than what InfoWars does? Alex Jones claimed that on July 4th, Democrats would launch a civil war, and that's crazy. They're not going to do that. They didn't do that. And of course, we all knew it wasn't going to happen. So why he said it, I have no idea. But it's possible. It, it actually is possible that a civil war could happen. So at least that's based in reality. Not everything Jones says is based in reality. I'm not going to give him that much. But in the examples given by CNN, alleging that the Parkland survivors who are all over TV are child actors, well, that's actually probable. And I'm pretty sure in some cases, some of these kids were were actually drama students. Now, CNN here alleged a black hole may have swallowed an airplane. Or I should say, Don Lemon did mention it was preposterous, but really did entertain the question. And you know that people are going to watch that and think it's a possibility. And then you have this woman claim that she's glad that so many people are helping with their theories, even if it's a black hole swallowing a plane and then asserting that a small black hole would swallow, swallow the universe. That's just, just plain wrong. But you know what? CNN isn't done here. If we're going to talk about Parkland, how about we talk about the time they ran an interview with a student who talked about how they were told police would be shooting blanks at them to scare them. 
I thought it was a drill because they told us we'd have police officers who were going to be firing blanks to like scare us, get us like, you know, trained for this. I'm not going to fault CNN for doing an interview. And apparently, yes, there was a drill planned where they said police might be firing blanks. But videos like that, interviews like that, where they then don't clarify what actually happened, leads people to believe pretty crazy things. Should we have CNN videos taken down from Facebook because it could mislead people as to what actually happened? I assure you, a lot of people think that this video is about a false flag attack. That's actually how I found it. People are spreading that video around and making the claim that there was no shooter in Parkland and that it was actually just a drill and they're using it. It's a, it's a false flag. I don't believe that to be true. I think the student is correct. They were planning a drill and he didn't realize it was an actual event. This can happen. Or how about the time PolitiFact rated Don Lemon as totally false because he said automatic weapons are easy to get. Don Lemon said that he was able to go and buy an automatic weapon and he said that he maybe shot, shot a gun three or four times in his life. He doesn't live in Colorado, and he thinks most people can go out and buy an automatic weapon. Don Lemon said this on TV, and it is factually incorrect. It is fake news. You cannot buy automatic weapons. AR-15s are not automatic weapons. Don Lemon has been wrong time and time again. In fact, when I was reporting in Ferguson, I was tear gassed. And just down the street was Don Lemon on CNN reporting there was no tear gas as me and several other reporters were gagging from tear gas. Now, why that is, I don't know. Don Lemon was wrong. And I had people on my live stream saying, Don Lemon is reporting this. And I'm in the tear gas saying, yes, we are being tear gassed. So why is it that Don Lemon is able to go on and make wild claims about black holes, claims about buying automatic weapons, and actually state there's no tear gas when literally behind him you can see smoke and other reporters are gagging from tear gas? I have no idea. But if the argument is that Facebook and other social media sites should take fake news down, then CNN is in a glass house and throwing stones. CNN has been involved in numerous gaffes and factually incorrect statements. And there is a reason why we have to advocate for even the craziest ideas. As much as it pains me to say this, there is a line, I don't know where it is, but getting rid of Infowars is probably not the right move for one reason. If CNN is going to put out something that's absolutely insane, like a black hole swallowing a plane, should they be deleted? What if someone puts out a crazy conspiracy theory that turns out to be true? Alex Jones, to me, is an entertainer. I think a lot of people like what he says and think he challenges the mainstream media, but I don't hold him in a very favorable light, but that's fine. I think he should be allowed to say what he says, and I think people should be allowed to watch him. I have had videos that were factually correct taken down only to be reinstated later when news organizations issued corrections. Should my videos get removed because people think they might sound too crazy? The answer is no, they shouldn't. CNN should not be taken down, Infowars should not be taken down, and once again, CNN needs to be really careful about how they frame this narrative because it really does seem like they're throwing stones. But again, I wanna clarify, just because they're reporting on Infowars doesn't mean that they're advocating for anything. Though I would assume a lot of people who like Infowars will take offense at how often Oliver Darcy and CNN report on Infowars and their stories. With that in mind, I've been criticized for Antifa for simply reporting on what happened with Patreon and getting a statement from Jack Conti about the far left propaganda site, it's going down. So no one is innocent, I'm not innocent, everyone makes mistakes, and we need to recognize that no news organization is perfect. But if we allow Infowars to be taken down, then what, CNN's next? because CNN says crazy things too. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. Stay tuned, new videos every day at 4 p.m. and more videos up on my second channel, youtube.com slash TimCastNews, every day at 6 p.m. Again, thanks so much and I will see you then.